Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable bow clutch and matching wallet. This was made from the Simply Colorful 2 collection from Moda, and isn't it great? I just love these jewel tones. I, you know, a lot of times um, drawn toward pastels, but this was exciting because I just love the saturation of color. This bag goes together. We'll, we'll be making the, the bigger project. This smaller wallet is made exactly the same way, but with different measurements. Go to the Shabby Fabrics homepage, shabbyfabrics.com. At the bottom, there's a link that says free downloads. Go ahead and click there. There are so many projects there. Um, the one that you'll be looking for today in order to make this project is the bow clutch and wallet um, diagram, and that'll have all the measurements that you need for your fabrics, your fusible webbing, etc. cetera. Um, so, Easy. Three fat quarters makes one bag. Very economical. And you'll just need to pick up some fusible fleece. I like to use the fusible fleece versus the non-fusible because it just saves a step of pinning or using basting spray. So I, I really enjoy that. You do want some coordinating thread. Today we'll be using the Superior um, brand Masterpiece endorsed by my friend Alex Anderson, a wonderful woman, fabulous uh, pattern and fabric designer and she has endorsed this this um, thread that i use i really use this exclusively it's 100 percent cotton we'll be using color let's see what have we got today 172 which is the plum berry it, it just works perfectly with the simply colorful too and the purple tones let's get started on making this bag you're going to be amazed at how easy it is the one thing i want to point out about the fabric we've used for the bow there's three fabrics here. In fact, let me show you. There is the, just so you were on the same page, there's the bow fabric and the knot. This is the outside fabric and this is the lining. We'll be using those exact same fabrics here. Note how the bow fabric is directional. So that's important because you want to make sure that you study the fabric and cut it the right direction so that the flowers are and, and the vines are, are vertical. So that's what we have here. Let's start with that fabric, in fact. The measurements, again, just get that from the free download. That's going to be true of all of these fabrics. So if you're wondering, well, what size is this and what size is that? Get the free download before you even really start. And then we'll jump into the project together so you're able to refer to those specific measurements. So you'll lay this out. Notice the vines are, are going vertical. Go ahead and just fold in half, so a quarter of an inch, and press open. I've done that ahead of time, and that's what we have here. This will be your bow, and you'll need another little piece. Uh, that will be the knot of the bow. Same story. Fold in half, so press, flip right side out. That's done ahead of time. So let's, let's go ahead and turn the bow fabric out. This is my favorite part, the bow. You know, anything frilly, girly, I love all that stuff. Um, now you've got your seam. So of course you're going to want that on the back. So I wanna understand where that is. Then I'm gonna just flip that over. We will actually go ahead, we'll, we'll accordion this, but before we do that, we need to get our knot ready to go so it'll be able to hold that accordion. Um, you've already turned this. Simply uh, sew the quarter of an inch, press that seam open, turn that right side out, and then we'll be able to slip the bow through um, through there. So let me sew that right now, and then we'll be able to make the bow. Okay, very straightforward. So just simply turn that right side out as you would expect. And you can press that if you want, you know, that's a good idea actually, because there is going to be a lot of fabric rolling through there here very shortly. Let's go ahead and press that seam open. Sometimes I'm tempted to skip the steps of pinning or pressing and it's never a good thing. So take the time when you know that you should, just do it, get it out of the way. This is one of those times. All right, so that's going to hold this bow. Of course, I would trim the threads off. Now, we know we've got the seam on the exact back side. 
we folded this, if you can notice, kind of in three sections. So you'll see this part, and then there's a really cool little tuck here, and then this part. So I'm going to just begin. You can do this any way you want. Kate made this one. I may want my tucks to be different. Now you can always just start. Go ahead and put that through and then adjust. That may be simpler. Let's just get that to the midpoint like this. And then you can kind of fuss around. You may want more tucks than that. You may want them to be random. Make it yours. That's the fun part about doing projects in your fabrics and in your style. It can be whatever you want. Now that part, I like that. I like how that looks. It has a little bit of an extra tuck. That, and I think it still looks great. So for now, let's put that apart because, aside because we need to make the actual bag itself in order to sew the bow down to something. As I mentioned before, outside fabric, lining fabric, right? We have both. You'll use the outside fabric and your fusible fleece. And of course, you'll use the bumpy side, which has the glue. Take that over to your pressing mat and you would simply place that together and iron. Now I've done that ahead of time to save us a little bit of time on camera. So we're at this place right now. So I want, I'm gonna open this up so you're able to see this. So if this flap wasn't sewn down, you can see how the bag is basically in three sections, the top third, the middle, uh, and then the bottom. We will be positioning, we will be positioning the bow in that top area, that top third, so to speak. Now try to stay, now I'm trying to get that positioned where that knot's right in the middle. Try to stay about a quarter of an inch away from the top because that's where your seam is going to be coming in. You don't want to get your bow kind of tucked into that when it's turning. So stay a quarter of an inch down. Now, of course, the bow is extending out beyond the bag. That's normal at this point. Just make sure that the bow at least reaches the edge and it's okay to go beyond, but you have to at least get to that edge, of course. Now you're going to fuss around with this bow until you like how it looks. Let's just say that I like this look right now. Then at this point, you will simply pin that into place. And I like to make sure that the bow comes down to the same place down here. You might even want to mark that to the sides with a ruler or a little friction pen, just so you know that one side of the bow isn't lower than the other. So pin, 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 pin. And then I'm going to run a basting stitch because I want to kind of lock that down before I put the lining on it. Otherwise, it's just too much to deal with. So I will go ahead. I'm going to mess around that bow a little more until it's exactly the way I want. Pin it. Run a basting stitch. And then I'll come in with my ruler. And I'm just going to clean off that excess fabric. And then we'll go to the next step. So the bow is now attached to the outside fabric. Remember, being down by a quarter of an inch and I trim the excess fabric away. So now we will come in with the lining fabric, right sides together, and simply pin. Now we've done that ahead of time. Not only did we pin, but we sewed around, well, more than three of the sides. Leave your opening, definitely keep your opening away from the bow. What do I mean by opening? You're going to pin all the way around here. Let's leave the side of this bag open. It's a much more natural place to have the opening for turning than to have it where the bow is located. So we've done this ahead of time so you can see what we did do here. Right, started here. Make sure you reinforce always. That's a, that's, that's a given, um, but I'll still forever remind you about it. So a quarter inch all the way around, stop here reinforcing, leaving about a three, well, no, four to five inch opening at least. So let's do that now. We also found that if you clip the corners, um, don't get too close to your threads though, you don't wanna cut through what you've just done. It makes the bag a little bit sharper in the corner, so I'm gonna do that real quick, and then we'll turn it through. 
We have a new turning tool that I love. Very basic, but very, uh, very useful. So I've been kind of using whatever I've had. I finally now actually have a gadget that is made just for this. So let's go ahead and turn this through. And I like this tool because it helps get out those corners so they lay a lot flatter. I don't want them to be rounded. I like those nice 90 degree, 90 degree turns, those corners. Okay, let's turn that all the way through. Now, if you're going to be making the, um, the wallet, as I mentioned before, just refer to the same download, which will have the measurements for the clutch and the wallet. Same exact technique. So now we've turned this through, and if you need to use this uh, turning tool to assist you, you'll just get in there, and it's gonna help get those corners out so they're much sharper. So this is another great tool to have in your sewing room if you don't already have it. See what that did for that corner right there? What a difference. That's, that's really significant. Let's go up here and let's do this one together. I just love the way that it just gets in there. You're not having, it's nothing so sharp like a pair of scissors that can potentially poke through your fabric. So look how great that is. Now, uh, of course, you'll want to press that out. Um, you have your opening here. Simply turn that under a quarter of an inch and pin. Take that to your sewing machine. Now, when we first did our sample bag, we just sewed all the way over and kind of sewed over top of the bow. You can do that. We made the bag a second time, and instead of sewing over the corners of the bow, we lifted the bow out of the way, if you can see that. So the, I just wanted to give that option to you as far as finishing when you do sew the quarter of an inch. You can sew over the bow, or if you don't want to, simply move it out of the way and then, and then continue stitching. For the bag closure, all kinds of options. Um, we have, you could use magnets or you could use snaps. You can finish the bag however you want to. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this fun bag from Shabby Fabrics.